Hello out there, I'm Geronimo, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. Last time, we got started on this factory for dark magic, in part to continue down the path of the IV tier laid out in the Ancient Tome, and more importantly, because I keep getting this feeling that the path to absolute power lies in cracking that tree. And to do it, we need a laser that can only be made in a special crafting table. The recipe seems simple enough. Other than this, that's quite a few nether stars. There are a few ways to come by those, but the dark magic route, it just feels right. Luckily, we're just about ready to go. Plan is to set up a basic Thomcraft line that will spit out Salus Mundus or Balance Shards using the Essentia from all these Wisps, plus a bit of extra Precantatio from our friend the Essentia Bee. Then, with all that free Salus Mundus, we'll make some Nether Stars to suit our immediate needs, and use the rest to work towards connecting our Thomcraft setups to the big AI brain in the sky. Uh, I mean, get into Thomic Energistics. What is going on with me lately? It's almost time to empower this insane node, but before that, there's one last thing we need. The AP Mancer's Drain. The reason we need this thing is because, combined with the Essentia Bee, it can give us a constant drip of any Essentia type. With enough of them, we can have unlimited everything, but even with just a few, we can get well down the road of supreme power. However, this recipe is also a slight bump in the road. We'll have to take a bit of a detour here to get it done. It's mostly pretty straightforward stuff, except for these pollens. These are a little bit of a gotcha. The unusual pollen is easy enough, just an output from a specific bee we can easily breed with our new Maddening Frames of Frenzy. But the phase pollen is a different story. This one is a 5.5% drop chance from a comb with a pretty low production chance itself. It might take more than a few of these. Nothing to it but to do it. Are you ready for progress? Now that was a lot of thumb crap. And all the investments we've made so far have really paid off. The crafting Scepter, the Mega Node, and the Rejuvenating Bee to recharge it in an instant were all amazing, and soon to improve. At the moment, we're making our first AP Mancer's Drain. There we go, and no time to waste. Let's put it to use. We've got our standard alveary set up with three electrical simulators. The bees go in, and with one drain under the middle block, we can attune it to Precantatio, and away we go. It'll be faster once we plug the simulators in. Aha, much better. While waiting to get the pollen, I went ahead and got the simple furnace line set up. This will burn our ethereal essence from the wisps, and if we send that essence to an alchemical construct... To... an alchemical construct... Ah, must be out of V. Super node to the rescue. As I was saying, if we send that essence to an alchemical construct, along with the Precantatio from the bee, it will give us a slow but infinite supply of Salus Mundus. Very useful indeed. Now, let me figure out these silly pipes. Here we are. The Salus is flowing, and we can even swap this to Balance Shards. I won't lie, this was not the most intuitive thing I've ever set up. And it looks hideous, but it's working. And to be fair, it's very satisfying watching the puffs of colored smoke. We'll improve that setup once we go digital. For the moment, we need Nether Stars, which we can get by combining the Salus Mundus with Null Catalyst. 
We're hung up on automating nether stars until we can automate null catalyst, but I might have a plan for that. In the meantime, with enough nether stars, we can take one more step towards building a laser powerful enough to crack that tree. With the dire crafting table, we can make this, the particle generator. We don't quite have the power capacity to run it, but getting a step ahead is always worth it. Another nice thing we can do with access to all these excess nether stars is make IV sensors, which means we can make the fluid solidifier hatch. It's expensive for a hatch, but worth it, since it means we can fluid solidify in the large processing factory, at least until it gets removed in 2.7. Here they are, our first quantum stars. Quest complete. The ancient tome is pleased. Which reminds me, we can do a little bit of questing while we're going down this road. Might as well make the emitter too. And there's the first sensors. And the first emitter. Quest please. Yes, I love to hate it. And if we've come this far, why not grab the IV circuit assembler? We can't use it in the processing array yet, but again, one step ahead. And why not autocraft it, you ask? Why not indeed? There we go, easy as that. Now there's just one last thing to do before we get back to corrupting our soul with dark magic. Make the laser. Feels like a long, long time coming. Still more to do, but we're close. Okay, back to our soul. And uh, yeah, so th this panel is really cool. Once we give it Centivy, It'll keep our wand fully charged all the time. Totally fair trade for the sanctity of our spirit, I'd say. And at last, it's time to empower this beast of a node. Stabilizer first, looking good. And the transducer. Oh man, I'm so nervous. Okay, here we go. It's happening. Hold on. This is it. Feel it. The power. But what was that noise? I feel like ignoring things it hasn't really worked out. We better check on this. It sounded like it came from outside. Maybe over here. Ah, what's this? He had stumbled into darkness Dark itself. Self, self, self. The goddess Nemesis trembled. Tremble, tremble. She herself had sealed, sealed, the, cave, sealed cave. the caves. The engravings imbued with her power, power, power. She must warn the Earth Mother. Whoa, check this out. How long has this been here? Oh, I don't know. A few centuries, perhaps? You can talk? Oh, yes, I can talk. You stand before half men like y'all. Voices and more Scots. And who are you, grave robber? I'm, uh, I, I'm not robbing your grave. My grave? Ha! This is the grave of Odin himself. I heard you stand guarding under the ancient mighty powers of the Fed. Tell the word you want to hear before me. Ancient power, you say? Well, I'm worthy. I'm Geronimo. Perhaps you are, but I'm not so easy to miss. Trials wait for those who wish to power gods. If you can survive the first, I will be worthy. 
Tinder, and you will find out. Yes. And difficult. To go to the ball, the gods themselves will reward you. What say you, Rama? I'm in. What's first? You must show your true power. And to do so, you must master the air say. Only a blast derived from the energy of Earth itself can break the tree. Wait, how did you know? Power. Power will be on your wild streets. Go. Hmm. Master of the Earth's energy. I like the sound of that. If I'm picking up what old Danny Boy was putting down, it sounds like the place to start is with some Earth magic. The first thing on the docket is daylilies and nightshades to dip our toes into mana production, just enough so that we can get the legit mana pool and some intermediate production. So it's time for a bit more research. And there's some cool interplay between Thomcraft and Botania that'll mean we don't have to spend much time hunting for the mushrooms that become petals, the base level Botania ingredient. Nothing to it but to do it. Speaking of multi-magic madness, the Everfull Urn is very handy for keeping the Petal Apothecary full of water. And it has a cousin that might help us out later. Nice. We'll also need a handful of pure daisies to make Living Rock and Living Wood, another base ingredient for this form of magic, and one of the items we'll need for the mana pool. So... I've been out hunting for mushrooms to get stocked up until we have a better way, and I just lost my boots to the Traveler. That's what I get for not paying attention. Dingus Maneuver and definitely a step in the wrong direction. And that's a step we need to undo immediately, because even though the speed's hook getting used to, I can barely stand to be without it now. There we are, fresh from the manufacturer. This will help too, a wireless charger pack. We have wireless chargers down here at the base that keep our suit, jetpack, and Vajra charged, but clearly our precious armor is at risk while we're out and about. Not anymore. All right, a little while later, and we've got a couple of day blooms giving trace amounts of mana. These will die after an hour, but at least the man is free. I was thinking about making some nightshades too, but we can make it daytime much more easily than we can make it nighttime. And this is pretty slow, so we want to scale up quickly. Mana pool achieved, plus a few more daylilies to speed things along. At least it's something. We'll wait these out, and when they die, aim for something better. That means it's time to move to the cave. Half Dan said he need to witness our power for himself after all. Before we do, there's something that might help us work more effectively down there. The Universal Wireless Terminal. It's a lot more expensive than it looks, trust me on that. In fact, it's so expensive, we need to upgrade our crafting CPUs to request just the subcomponents from our system. Okay, here we go. Five wireless terminals, please. Yeesh, look at the size of her. Yep, more than enough to outpace our previous crafting capacity. This might take a minute or two. This setup has been hanging out for a while in preparation for this very moment. It's simple, with a reservoir pumping water into a matter condenser, using the first 64k storage component ever made in this world to slowly compress water into singularities. Pretty cool looking too, and this won't be the last time we use them. There's the last piece. The rest were pretty simple after the big autocraft. Hold on game, hold your applause. Now you can clap. Okay, well it's super cool to me anyway. Let's link this thing up, and huzzah! Mission accomplished. With this in our hands, we can bring the full capability of our system everywhere. Even making patterns and putting them in the interfaces completely remotely. How cool is that? The magical interplay continues too. Now for the runic altar. Is it finally time to move in fusion? Yes. Okay, honestly, cool, but not as cool as the universal terminal. Come on. With an upgrade to endoflames, which consume combustible material in exchange for mana and don't die, we can sustain a bit more crafting at a time. The idea is to use a timer to trigger an item dropper just often enough that the coal being dropped doesn't despawn before it can be consumed. That should give us enough mana to get all the runes and to get the terrestrial agglomeration plate. To get all this, it's gonna take some work. Are you ready for progress?
Whoa! That was a mission and a half, but quest complete. As you can see, we've improved some things. Are you seeing this, Danny boy? But not enough for what's coming next. With four of every rune, we can move on. It's time for some magical agglomeration. Which means it's time for you to go, old friend. The last remnants of a bygone era. I've been hesitant to upset the balance of the blessed symmetrical stability that, uh, outside of user error, has prevented major catastrophe. But we can delay no more. We need to beat our previous stability high for these infusions, too. There it is, in like Flynn. And what an infusion. I've said it before, but this animation was way ahead of its time. Legendary stuff. I'll miss seeing this after it's automated, but to be fair, this can take a while. Even so, worth admiring while we still can. Anyway, here are the goods. Let's get the Medal of the Gods. And here's the plate. In a spot of convenience for now. We'll rearrange this whole room once we get off into flames for mana. We can't keep burning coal forever, right? We need to burn something better. To make this work, we need some sparks. And the reason we need better fuel is about to become apparent. Each terrace still takes half a mana pool. We've got a bit in reserve, which will eventually get sparks too. But for now, let's get our first ingot of the gods. Whoa, now that's power. The gods you trifle with are not what they see. They had been locked away, locked away for a reason. You must, must turn, turn back, 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 back. You must never, 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 never. Well, I guess there's no turning back now. Let's keep going. With the Everburn Urn, cousin of the Everfull Urn, we can provide a constant supply of lava to a patch of thermal lilies. All things we can easily afford at this point. Steady as she goes, Infusion Altar, you're doing great. Infinite lava? Yes. Infinite buckets? No. Give me those. Another small optimization we can make is trading mana for more flowers with the Jaded Amaranthus. How do you like me now, Leaf Nyal? Here we go. Obligatory Lava Power. Don't mind if I do. And quite a few, too. Unlike the Ever Full Urn, the Ever Burn Urn requires Centivee to provide lava. And it's just our luck there was a spare node in the Thomcraft chest. If we get this thing empowered like the one upstairs, we'll be cooking with gas. And to complete the setup, Urn. Tank, pump, on import, beautiful, isn't it? Here's the completed work. It's pretty similar to the Endoflame setup, really. The tank delivers buckets of lava, the dispensers are triggered by a timer every six minutes, and the mana gets produced in mass. We've got lenses on the mana spreaders that increase the burst size, and sparks on all the mana pools to distribute the juice. Next up, a portal to the realm of the gods. After rearranging once again, the portal is up. I just need a spot for the apothecary. Why not here? Perfect. Mana production is doing great. All the pools can supply the portal. I think we're ready to go. Once again, you disappoint. disappoint. You never fail me. Fail this. Fail this. You will pay for your treachery. 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 Mother Gaia waits. Oh, well, waits. She beckons. 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 And Nemesis lies in the shadows. Shadow, shadow. The afterlife would suit you well, well, well. And so ends the magical arc. For now. To show half Dan Leafnarl our true power, I think we need, well, actual power. And since we need that anyway, I'd say our interests align. Luckily, with the glass we hoodwinked the elves into trading, a Lapatronic supercapacitor just became a lot cheaper. I guess we have a goal for next time. See you then. And hey, stay positive out there.